Moody Quaid here from Roller Derby Athletics, the place online for derby specific training advice. Today's video isn't exactly a workout. Today we are just talking about proper form. It's super important to use proper form when you're working out for two different reasons. Number one, if you're not using the correct form, then you are not getting the maximum benefit out of the time that you are spending working out. I hate, hate wasting time and I definitely don't want to waste yours. So I want to make sure that you're doing every exercise as close to perfect as you possibly can. Number two, doing exercises with the wrong form can actually be detrimental. It can create injuries or it can worsen injuries that you already have. No one wants to get a derby injury from something that didn't happen on the track. So let's fix that today. Today, we're going to go through some of the basics, some of the major pitfalls and make sure that you're working out with the correct fundamentals. First, we're going to talk about engaging your core. What the heck does that mean anyways? People say it all the time. Engaging your core is going to mean taking this whole sheath of muscles that's on the front of your abdomen, imagining that it's all connected to a single cord, and you're going to pull that cord towards the center of your spine. All right, I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's fairly subtle, but we're going to give it a try. Here I am standing with pretty good posture, my core not engaged. Now I'm going to go zip and pull that core towards the center of my spine. Now notice the difference. It is not sucking it in. Okay. Sucking it in is going to look like this. Okay. So my rib cage expanded and I got a big hollow uh, here under my diaphragm and I pulled my, my stomach towards my spine, but it's not quite the movement we're looking for. I also want you to notice that Engaging your core does not mean tucking your pelvis under. It's not this. You want to try to maintain the curvature of your lumbar spine in its natural position. Only if an exercise specifically calls for it should you also be tucking your pelvis. Next, we're going to talk about squats. Squats are a great exercise, but they're often improperly done. For starters, keep your chest and your gaze upwards. That will help you to keep your back straight, Otherwise your back tends to round and then all of the form starts to fall apart from there. So chest and head up, feet turned out just a little bit, not quite 45 degrees. Now watch what happens if I start to look at the ground. Okay. Suddenly my shoulders tend to follow my back curves, my pelvis is tilted under and I'm not getting the benefit of the exercise. You don't want your pelvis tilted under. You want your pelvis rotated backwards so that you've got your booty back and your weight in your heels. You should be able to lift your toes up off the ground every time you squat down. Doing baby squats is another common mistake. I see tons of girls. Yeah, here I go. I'm doing squats. That's not a squat, sweetheart. That's a squat. Okay. If you don't have the strength right now to do a proper squat technique, then there are lots of different ways you can modify. You can do a wall sit where you spend some time just hanging out like this and you're working your quads, you're working your glutes. Just make sure you squeeze those glutes. You can also hold on to something firm, a column, both sides of a door handle and use that to lower yourself down into a proper squat position until you get the feeling for the technique. You can also do a squat with a physio ball against the wall. Just get that ball under your low back and then squat down from there. For all exercises that involve a bent knee, like squats and lunges and jumping versions of those, the knee positioning is very important. You always want to imagine a plane that connects your toes, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders. Okay, you never want any of those joints to break that plane. Here's an example. When you go into a lunge position, you want that front knee tracking directly over your heel and your toe. You don't want to see that knee cave in towards the center line and off that plane that's connecting all of your joints. Keep it nice and centered over your heel. In the other direction, make sure that your knee is staying over your heel and your toe. You don't want to be positioned so that your weight is further forward and your knee is coming out past your toes. Sumo squats work our inner thigh muscles, our adductors. 
This is great because we use our adductors tons in skating, especially doing a crossover with that inside leg pulling through. We're using those inside leg muscles a ton. So here's how to do one properly. We all have different hip flexibility. So the positioning of our feet and how much we're turned out at the legs is gonna be different for each one of us. And here's how to find your proper position. Start with your feet more than hip width apart, probably about six inches, wide, six inches wider than shoulder width apart with your feet facing straight forward and backwards. Now, put your weight onto your heels and turn your legs out from your hips as far as you can and then drop your feet again. That's your position. Now, you must keep all of this engaged while you do the exercises the entire time, both when I'm standing just like this and when I'm down in the sumo squat. You've got to keep rotating your legs externally from your glute muscles and from your inner thigh muscles the whole time. So a proper sumo squat would look like this. I never stop using those turning out muscles the entire time. Just like with the lunges, we've got to make sure that our knees are tracking over our heels and our toes. So once again, don't let your knees cave forward toward the inside. You're wrenching on your ankles, wrenching on your knees. Last but not least, let's talk about plank-based exercises. That includes things like planks themselves, push-ups, mountain climbers, those kinds of things. Posture is very important for these exercises. Without using the correct posture, you're definitely not getting the benefit. Common mistakes include dropping your head, looking at your knees, your feet, or lifting your chin, so you're pinching the back of your neck. Letting your hips lift up, or letting your hips sag. Also, when holding a plank position, engage your shoulder muscles and imagine pulling your arm sockets as far away from the floor as possible. This will protect your shoulder joints and make it more comfortable. By using the correct form in your workouts, you might find at first that you can't do as much as you used to. Can't hold that plank quite as long, for example. Don't worry, remember, it is quality over quantity here. Working out with proper form will make you stronger. I hope you found this workout useful. I'm Booty Quake. I just kicked your ass. Now you can go kick somebody else's.